guys, welcome to Quantum Change. I'm Natasha Williams and I'm a Life Transformation Specialist and Personal Development Coach. And what I want to discuss with you today is how do you know what you're meant to be doing with your life? And I always say the people that are lucky are the ones who grow up in childhood knowing exactly what they're going to be and then they become it. And they've had so much time to learn to get the right people, to get involved, to build up that momentum that it takes to build any kind of career. But by the time they're in the early 20s, they're already quite well established. And so the time is on their side. Now, most of us are not that fortunate. We don't get that opportunity to know what we want. In fact, when my elders asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I didn't even have a clue. I wasn't thinking about what I'm going to be when I grow up. It wasn't even a question on my mind. I thought, I don't know who I'm going to be and where I'm going to be. How can I give you that answer? And I think most of us don't really know. And what also confuses people is that they are given so much information from the world. You know, just like the internet currently, there are so many people that tell you better ways to save or better ways to diet. And there's all this conflicting information that you don't even know who to follow. And all it does is make you do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and you end up getting nowhere. And what happens is when you are growing up, your school might say, oh, this person is good at maths or they're good at biology or they should be doing woodcraft or whatever it is. That's what it should be. Just because you're good at it doesn't mean you would like it. And also just because you like it doesn't mean you're going to be good at it as a career. And so that is where a lot of the problems stem from. What I also find is that our schooling system, especially in South Africa, is very limiting. We don't have extracurricular activities like photography or, or any of that other external stuff, that, that arts and crafts or anything like that. It's all very standardized. And only when you start getting to uh, the higher levels after you leave school do you actually start specializing in what it is that you'd like. But then even then, it's still very generic. And so being a master at something specific is quite hard to get to. And then there's the other problem is that your parents might want you to be something that you are not interested in being. A lot of cultures might expect, for example, I've seen in the Indian culture, they want you to be a professioned person. So you need to be a lawyer, uh, a banker, a doctor, and a, and a highly qualified one. And that is the way of the tradition, but you might hate it. And there is nothing more, in my opinion, soul destroying than being at a job that you hate. Now, there are so many people on the internet that tell you, uh, you know, do your passion test or learn what it is you love. But I'll give you a simple technique that you can actually do to find out what is it that you love. And the reason, before I even give you that test, is the reason why I want you to know what it is that you love is because if you're going to be working at it for the rest of your life, you better enjoy it. I love what I do. I absolutely love it. I never question for a moment that I'm in the right profession because for me, teaching, training, researching, sharing values, helping people, lifting up consciousness, personal development is my absolute passion. So I cannot do anything else. Not that I, I don't have a choice. I just can't see me thriving in any other environment where I'm being stifled. I don't like rules. I don't like being told what to wear. I cannot work for a boss. I've been self-employed for the last 30 years and I will most probably always be self-employed because, well, that is what I will be because I cannot work for somebody else under their rules. And what I find is people are instilled with fear. So what happens is they might be told, you'll never amount to anything, you're no good, if you don't study, you're not going to get good grades, and the inspiration is not there. They're not inspired at, at school to pursue the things that they really enjoy. Or maybe they compare themselves to others and think, well, I'm not good enough, even though they have a talent, I'm not good enough because this person's better, and they put themselves down in it. At the end of the day, it all boils down to self-worth. But I will tell you something, if you really, really love what you do, and love doing certain things, nothing will stop you. Um, if I, when I decided to start teaching my fitness classes, I had that idea and my then husband said to me, it'll never work. And I couldn't understand that concept. To me, I just looked at him with a, like blank because I couldn't understand how he could say that it will never work because I had already seen it in my mind. So I just continued doing what I did and it was a huge success. I helped so many people and I grew myself in the process 
And I didn't just help people empower themselves. I helped business owners. I helped uh, families, you know, and, and it's, it has a knock-on effect. So if I didn't love it and I didn't do it, I would show up miserable and it would rub off. People wouldn't come back and I wouldn't have been successful. And so we land up just getting a job, just to get by, just to do what we need to do. But where your core talent is, where your core interest is, if you could work in that field, you will light up. And at the end of the day, a lot of people think, oh, but it's about the money or it's about the, the living style or whatever. I can promise you something. I have a belief that if you do something that you love, the money will follow. Why? Because if I love speaking to my clients and I love engaging them and I love helping them and they're getting results, they're going to tell their friends, they're going to feel valued, they're going to want to come back, they're going to tell their friends. That's how it works. So why would it not grow? The other thing is that we are told by our parents what we should be and because we're told by our parents, we forget who we are. We forget our authentic selves because we need to fit in. People's primary need in the world is to belong and they will sacrifice their own needs, their own values, their own things they love to do for the sake of the family, the culture, the wife, whoever it is, and they lose themselves in the process. And you might do that as a sacrifice, but what happens then when you do that is you land up resenting the very people you're doing it for. You land up losing confidence and belief in yourself. You get angry at the world, you're angry at yourself because you gave up what you wanted in the exchange that you would make the other person happy. But if you become unhappy in the process, you're going to make them unhappy anyway. So it's kind of a self-defeating exercise in any case. And also, if you're doing something that somebody else wants you to do rather than what you want to do, you are living in their value system. You're not living in your value system. And whenever you do that, you are not helping anybody because it's not where your expertise lies. You can't add value to something that you know nothing about or not interested in. My son last night was watching a two-hour documentary, he's 12, on black holes and then proceeded to go online and do a quiz about it and to me it's like writing an exam on physics which I would find extremely boring it would just not be anything i'd ever be interested in he hates maybe certain school exams but for this this fascinates him and so you will find that there's areas in your life that are fascinating to you that you will naturally want to go out investigate and participate in now that is what you came here on earth to do that is what i believe your purpose is what you came with your unique identity, your unique signature, your unique experiences, because everybody has their own, their own way of figuring things out, their own way of making sense of the world. And so they have their way of sharing. If somebody else is a musician and they give music to the world, it's to give people the opportunity to relax. Some people are told music is not a, a profession, but yet there are people making millions of dollars in music and why because they are helping so many people they're offering something of value and so what I'd like you to do is a little exercise is you need to find out what it is that is important to you what it is that lights you up now there's a difference between your definition of values and what most people think values are values is not ethics and morality and respect and love and honor what I'm referring to by values is what do you value? What do you like? Do you like sports? If somebody had to have a conversation with you, what is it that would light you up that you could talk about for hours? And also, where do you spend your money? So there is a, a PDF that you can download or you can go online. It's Dr. John Demartini. I'll, I'll put the link below the video. It's, uh, he has written a book called The Values Factor that you can follow that I absolutely love because he's really, he's got 13 questions that are very clear that will help you to find out who, what is important to you, not necessarily to somebody else. And you might have forgotten, it's been so long since you actually allowed yourself to think. And the way that we've been trained is we look at what the outside world 
is offering in terms of a career and then we see how we can align ourselves to that. And what I want you to do is I want you to look inside and say, these are all the skills that I have. What can I do with them? So it's a reverse thinking. If you go back to the old school way of people finding work, if your father was a blacksmith, you became a blacksmith. If your father was a baker, you became a baker. And so you actually become the son of whatever you, the, the, the apprentice to whatever your father was doing. And we are now in a world where there are even careers that haven't even been discovered yet because of the move in technology, the great strides that we've been making. So you don't even know. I am a pole fitness instructor. That didn't even exist 20 years ago. It didn't exist. So how would I ever have known what I'm going to become? And so it's not about where you're going to see yourself in the future. It's what do I have to offer now? Because as you get into something, you actually grow your skill base, you grow your expertise, you become more proficient, more confident, more clear, stronger in whatever it is that you're doing, more effective. And so the more you're in it, the better you get. And the longer you wait, the long, longer you have to wait before you start getting proficient in something. So I'm saying, don't waste time. Go and do that exercise. Sit down. It's 13 questions. It might take you half an hour. I tell you, it's half an hour of your life that will change your life and your trajectory for the future. Because when you're clear on who it is that you are, what it is that you love, instead of comparing yourself to others, you get more grounded in who you are and you realize that you have your own unique gifts that nobody else can have. For every chief, there has to be a whole lot of Indians. For every lot of Indians, there has to be a chief. So there's always a place. And I hope that you find yours. And what I would love for you to do, just so that I know that you've been watching my videos and that you are, it's helpful to you, is please do that exercise. And then in the comments below, tell me what it is that were your top three values that came out. And I hope that this video was of service or value to you. Please share it with your friends and your family. And I hope to see you next week. Have an awesome week.